So, what's up for today? I want to put this little GPS satellite into a low orbit of 120 kilometers of altitude. It has a little computer, some uh, monopropellant, some RCS thrusters and uh, of course tons of antennas. And this is the final form of the satellite, the unfolded form of the satellite when it reached the final orbit of 120 kilometers. And of course we need a rocket to transport it into low orbit. Gotta admit, nothing special, uh, just a little rocket with three stages. It has a delta V of 3600 meters per second, so it's just enough to get into a low orbit. So this is Kerbin right now and you can see I've put already a few satellites into a low orbit. So we will launch the rocket when the KSC is somewhere around here. So we will just fast forward until we reach this next point of action. Okay, and now we have to launch the vessel going on a route of 210 degrees, meaning going yeah, south, south. West. All right, here we are on the new launch site of KSP-2. We need to keep in mind that we have to get on track onto a course of 210 degrees, meaning somewhere around in this direction. Slow down to 80%. This should be enough. SAS is on. Let's do that. Off of the GPS A1 satellite going on to a low orbit around Kerbin. Rotate ourselves a little bit towards 210 degrees. The next phase of the atmosphere with a lower density. So prepare yourself, guys. So now we can start the gravity turn a little bit need to be a little bit careful i know it's not the perfect rocket but i'm working on my building skills ah, i think we can go a little bit more towards the horizon and we need to get our flight path right in the beginning of our launch because our heading changes throughout our flight to 10 degrees uh, we need to go more to the right i guess 210 uh and our flight path completely changed. I don't know why there's such a huge jump when we make the transition from atmosphere to space, but I think we can work this out. And it looks gorgeous, look at that. I really like the visuals. What heading we are flying right now. Ah, oh, that's much better. A little bit more to the left. Now lower our nose because our apoapsis got quite high already and we need to work on our periapsis now. Flight path looks quite good, 210 degrees, lower the throttle because the apoapsis is reaching 120 kilometers and we will shut down the engine to get rid of the fairing because the fairing has some weight too. So let's just jettonize it and here we can see one of the many bugs. Uh, the fairing is fully buggy, I don't know why and there it goes down towards the surface because of reasons i guess let's get rid of the second stage some of the rcs to lower our nose towards the horizon okay and sas on so the apoapsis is quite right 120 kilometers but of course the periapsis is way too low we still have to increase our velocity ignite the last stage maybe let's say 50 percent and put our nose down to the horizon because we do not want to increase our apoapsis we want to increase our periapsis alone from now on we are behind the apoapsis and the effect of that is that we are now losing altitude so i will put up my nose a little bit more i'm sure you guys are way better pilots than i am but of course i'm still trying to figure things out in here <laughs> periapsis is building up fast we already increased our distance between us and the last stage with 45 kilometers Okay, I will now decrease the velocity and we wait a little bit until we reach the apoapsis to build up our periapsis as efficiently as possible. Let's just fast forward a little bit. We approach the apoapsis, make a little rotation so it's a little bit easier to work with our nav ball here. Reignite the last stage to build up our periapsis. We are about to reach 100 
kilometers. Since our apoapsis is now way above 120 kilometers, we need to brake a little bit. So we need to go in the opposite direction. Let's use some of the RCS thrusters. There we will approach the retrograde now, bring down the apoapsis down to 120 kilometers. We are now in an orbit of 120 kilometers uh, regarding apoapsis and periapsis. That's quite okay. Tracking station to see if our orbit looks fine. Let's see it from the other side because here we can actually see the orbit. Yeah, that's some sloppy flying. Of course, I intended to have this cross section cleaner. So the only thing we need to do now is to get rid of our last stage. We do not want to have the last stage flying around at the same orbit as our satellite because there's a risk of, you know, crashing. So we will decrease the orbit of the last stage so it goes back down to Kerbin. Undock here. And there it goes. Beautiful. I really like the visual so far. So let's just unfold everything we have here. Of course, very important, the solar panels. Without the solar panels, no energy. And without energy, no flying. So now extend the big boys antenna here. There it is. I want to pinpoint the big antenna here towards Kerbin. So we will just go radial in. And now we have a perfect calm environment. To deorbit our last stage, we just go retrograde here. Is that another satellite? Is that another satellite? Oh my god. There's another satellite. <laughs> Not crashing onto us, but it, it, it passed us quite closely. GPS A11. Let's just look at the tracking station. Okay, there was actually a satellite crossing our flight path at the, you know, big cross section over here. But every satellite has its own altitude. There's always a difference of at least four to five kilometers. And there was no way that we could have crashed into this boy, which we already lost. Say goodbye to our satellite here. Let's try to deorbit as soon as possible before we reach the dark side of the planet. Give a little bit more throttle, a little bit more, a little bit more. Maybe we can land over this island. This would be awesome. Maybe we can land somewhere around here. Fast forward once again. In this current state of early access, there's no re-entry heat approaching the atmosphere. I will give some more throttle because I actually intend to land down here but we are still very very fast yeah we are still way too fast and I don't have enough fuel on board okay we will definitely land in the waters no flames at all it's quite boring when it comes to re-entry at this current state of the KSP2 we can hear the wind but you know we can see no effects okay I will now give some more throttle because we are still very very fast that's way too fast for our parachutes But unfortunately, I don't have <laughs> any more fuel left. I think I will arm them now. 8,000 meters of altitude left. It looks quite gorgeous. I, I really like the game already. As long as they get rid of the bugs. I just hope that we are slow enough to put out our parachutes. Oh, we're getting very low now. Where are our parachutes? Where are our parachutes? There they are. Or there it is. I thought I had more parachutes installed. Lovely. Okay, we can turn off our SAS so it doesn't, you know, counteract with the parachute. Yeah, now we can just enjoy the ride. Now the frame drops are horrible. So let's just fast forward once again. Now we're getting closer and closer. And we have our last stage back down on Kerbin. All right, so we can recover this thing, recover vessel. Practice makes perfect. What a wise man. As far as I can see it, we completed our low orbit GPS comm system. And there's our last satellite of the GPS A class. So thank you very much for joining me here again. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it and hopefully see you soon again on our next ride here in KSB2. Thanks for watching and take good care of yourself.